Hello everyone, I know it's been a long time since I've made a Raspberry Pi video, but I finally got around to getting myself a Raspberry Pi 3, and I thought I'd make a getting started video and then uh, get started uh, actually doing some stuff with the Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, now, I almost didn't make this video because uh, since the, the last time I made a Raspberry Pi video, uh, they've made it incredibly easy to get started with the Raspberry Pi. And so I'll show you what I mean by that, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is go on over to the raspberrypi.org website. And uh, this is the home page. Go to the download section and you need to download an operating system. Now, in this example, I'm going to download Raspbian, uh, but I have also uh, tr uh, used Ubuntu Mate and uh, they both work uh, pretty seamlessly and flawlessly uh, so far. Uh, so let's just go to the Raspbian and there's a couple different versions here. Uh, I'm going to do the Raspbian with uh, uh, Jesse with Pixel and uh, so download the zip file. Now I'm not going to uh, do that. I've already done this here. Uh, if you're doing this for the first time, if you have downloaded this, this takes a while. Uh, I actually uh, started this last night and uh, it was going to take so long I just went to bed and, uh, <laughs> and came up came in this morning and uh, and now I'm going to show you how to go ahead and install that. So once that's downloaded, uh, you're going to want to, it, you're going to need a micro SD card and you're going to need to image that micro SD card. Uh, I guess first of all, uh, when you, when you first, uh, uh, when you first download that, it's going to be a zip file and you're going to need to extract that zip file. And I've done that in my Raspberry Pi folder here. Uh, so it's extracted. That's the image that we're going to want. Uh, now I have a micro SD card installed. And if you haven't seen my other videos on the uh, micro SD card benchmarking, uh, this is actually the card that I had in the, in the computer from that video. Uh, I'm just going to write over that because I, I don't need that information anymore. Uh, so... Uh, back to the image writing. So I'm using the Win32 Disk Imager. Uh, just Google that and uh, you can get that application. It's free. Uh, one very important thing uh, here is make absolute certain that the de device listed here is the micro SD card that you mean to erase and install this image on. If you select the wrong device here, uh, whatever device you select here will be completely erased and what will be it'll be replaced with a Raspberry Pi image. So uh, for example, if you were to select your computer hard drive there, you would uh, ruin your computer. Uh, so be very absolute certain you have the correct device listed there. Can't emphasize that enough. Uh, let's scoot on over there to where I had the image. Select that. Okay. And then I don't know why this doesn't come back at the top, uh, but there you go. And then I just uh, write that. And it, it asked me if, I, if I'm if i sure, uh, basically, because again, yeah, it's going to destroy anything that's already on there. I say yes, and it's going to write that. Uh, now, uh, once that is complete, we're gonna pop that out. We're gonna put it in the Raspberry Pi, and we're gonna uh, plug in a keyboard, a mouse, and a monitor into the Raspberry Pi, uh, at least when we were first setting it up, and uh, and then we'll go ahead and plug in the power, uh, and and I'll, I'll show you that here in just a second. Okay, once you have your micro SD card created, you're going to want to set up the Raspberry Pi hardware. Uh, the, just a note here, the last thing you want to do is connect the power. Uh, so leave the power uh, disconnected until you get everything else plugged in. Uh, essentially, the micro SD card you just created goes in the bottom side of the card on the uh, on the end here. Uh, contacts will be facing up. Uh, the HDMI port is where you plug in your monitor television. Uh, that's, that's pretty straightforward. And then you have four USB ports. And uh, at a minimum, uh, when you first get started, you need to plug in a keyboard and a mouse. And it doesn't matter which port you plug it into. You just need to make sure that, the, that those are plugged in. Uh, and then uh, once all that's done, uh, the last thing you do is plug in your power, uh, which would be a micro USB port. Uh, you want uh, about a two amp uh, power uh, supply for that. So plug that in and then, uh, then it should boot up automatically. So I'll show you that here next. 
Okay, uh, so when you first boot up the Raspberry Pi, you should see a screen similar to this. Now I'm actually, right now, I'm remoting into the Raspberry Pi from my computer just for recording the video, but what you're seeing right here on the screen should look very similar to what you see when you first boot up the Raspberry Pi with the uh, Raspbian image uh, as of this recording. Now one of the first things you're going to want to do is get the Raspberry Pi connected to the internet, and the Raspberry Pi 3 comes with its own built-in uh, Wi-Fi uh, radio so you can just oh, over here <clears throat> click on that radio and select the Wi-Fi router you want to connect to I've already connected this one of course but uh, if I wanted to connect to that one for example you enter in your your password for the router and then you can connect to that so that's one of the first things you want to do uh, next you want to uh, head on over to your uh, your menu here uh, click on the preferences and then Raspberry Pi configuration and that will bring up, uh, you want to go to interfaces, and uh, it, by default, these will not be enabled. I have enabled them here, so just go ahead. And these are things that, are, um, if you know you're not going to use these, that's fine. Uh, or if you don't know if you're going to use them, you can leave them disabled. Uh, I happen to know that I'm going to be using most of these things. So I, so I go ahead and enable all these and click OK. Uh, I'm not going to do that here because it, it also, when you after you click OK, it requires a reboot. So just, just be aware of that after you click OK, you'll reboot and you'll come back to the screen. All right. Um, and next thing, also under preferences, go to mouse and keyboard settings. Make sure your keyboard is set to whatever uh, your locale is. So I have a US uh, a English US keyboard. Make sure that's selected. Otherwise, some of your characters might not show up as expected when you're typing. Uh, so, and uh, oh, uh, one other thing. Uh, so I've already done this, uh, but you'll want to, one of the things that we enabled over here um, is the, uh, in interfaces, we enabled VNC. And when we did that, and after the reboot, you'll see that an icon that looks very similar to this up here. If you click on that, I'm not gonna do that because it's gonna show you my IP address. Uh, it, will, it will show you the IP address of the, uh, Raspberry Pi and it'll be different for different people and that's what you'll want to enter in uh, from your VNC viewer on your other computer when you remote into the Raspberry Pi so you just enter in that that IP address and uh, you should be able to access this okay in order to access the Raspberry Pi from our remote computer uh, we need to grab the real VNC viewer and that'll work uh, seamlessly with the real VNC server that's running on the Raspberry Pi and so just pick your operating system and go ahead and download that. And when we run that, it asks us to accept the terms and we'll just click OK there. And now we're ready to remote VNC into the Raspberry Pi. And uh, for this, we need to get our IP address. Now this is what you'll, you'll get this IP address from the Raspberry Pi. And I'm not going to show you what uh, what mine is, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and type it in here and then uh, access. And there we are, remote into the Raspberry Pi. And what I'm, what you're seeing here is the desktop of the Raspberry Pi. And if you have have Raspberry Pi also connected to a monitor, you should see your mouse pointer move on that monitor as well as uh, the one you're, you're working on. And if you happen to, like I do, I have a, a second computer that's also remoted into Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is now, this is showing up the same on that computer as well. So I've actually, you can't see it, but I've got this same view uh, with what I'm, I'm doing showing up on three different monitors running on three different computers. So that's what's really cool about this setup right out of the box with the Raspberry Pi 3 and the latest version of the Raspbian image. So now that we're in here, we can go ahead and poke around a little bit. You, you'll notice that uh, under programming, there's lots of different tools here. Uh, this is this, there's a lot here that wasn't here the last time I, I uh, used Raspberry Pi, so it's, that's good. I'll be excited to explore that. I have LibreOffice installed, uh, so you can actually you can do some real uh, real uh, real world work here. Uh, internet, of course, uh, games in Minecraft, Python games, or whatever. Hey, that's about it for this video. I hope you liked the video. P please subscribe and check back often for more videos. Thanks a lot. Bye.